I don't know whether to be happy or sad that the series finale of WandaVision finally dropped today because, you know, sad because this was a series that really captured me and surprised me. So I'm sad to see it go. But I'm excited because I got to see the finale of the show and the series finale. Oh, yeah, that's right. Quite literally called the series finale, finale, which goes with their theme, right? Yes. Which Um, goes with their spoofing of TV TV shows shows. throughout the decades. Yeah. So good. And and all those little nuances of TV shows. Absolutely. in the day. But in this review, we are going to focus, of course, on that last episode, but we will definitely make references back to the previous episodes because, I mean, come on, this is like the first Marvel TV show to arrive yeah. on Disney+. Plus. And, and we, we were all just like starving for some MCU goodness after the Black Widow had been delayed multiple times. Postponement, yeah. Still being delayed, but anyway, finally we got a property and it was Worth the wait. Absolutely. Yes. Wanda Vision. Hello again to our returning subscribers and welcome to those who are new to this channel. And for those who are unfamiliar, we are the Real Screeners. My name is Lenny and this is my co-host Beto. You obviously can find us on YouTube. You can also find us on many major podcasting platforms, including Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And as we always ask, guys, if you like our reviews, please consider subscribing to our channel. And of course, like, share, and hit that notification bell so that you'll know every single time we upload a video. Now, back to this review of WandaVision, guys. For those who may not have watched this ever before, and for some reason you're tuning into our video to hear about it, uh, we'll let you know that this is a show that's obviously in the MCU, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is based loosely on the graphic novel The House of M back in the early 2000s, and this show focuses on Wanda Maximoff and how she's dealing with the loss of her beloved Vision, who's her partner, and of course uh, losing her brother, Pietro, the, you know, Quicksilver, as we know him in the comic right, books. Right, her brother, right. And, well, it's supposed to be non-spoiler, but I'll let you know that, that, that she... That, that, that's going to be tough. It's that, going to be tough, It's going to be tough, yeah. I mean, this is very much, like you said, is about her, you know, kind of dealing with her grief and her right. kind of mental illness in a way, you know? I mean, she lost everything that was dear to her, and, of course, that kind of manifested into this force field right. that, where, she, where she actually manipulated reality and, uh, you know, she created her own ideal existence. Basically. Right. Where, where, where some people have to run to a bottle or cigarettes or who knows what to cope. Yep. She just created her own reality, guys. <laughs> One of the best things about this series is the way that it takes you decade by decade, starting with the 50s and leading up to the you 2000s, know, nowadays, basically. basically. And how you get a glimpse into each of the decades personalities, but also just like the way that TV shows were kind of presented during each of those time right. periods Even you know from the intros from the to intros the of the tv shows and the way that the characters dress and their looks and their appearances even the music and the style everything and that's one of the reasons why i think this show is so clever because a lot of the situations messages action conflicts are presented in different fashions according right. and, to each and, decade. And total homages to a lot of actual shows from those decades. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. So super clever guys. I, I thought it was going to be just like, oh, it's going to be her like uh, in the 50s uh, having her own little playful reality. I thought it was going to be fun, but this was hard hitting. And that last, this last episode touched me emotionally and I felt some emotion other than just Ah, you know, of course, this is going to pick up where Agatha Harkness has Wanda Maximoff's boys in her little, you know, magical clutches here. And as you would imagine, a battle ensues. Now, I'm going to let you guys know that this might have a few spoilers, but trust me, we're not going to spoil the ending for you or even the after credit stuff. But it is kind of hard to go over an episode without talking about some conflicts and some key points right so yeah so a battle ensues between them you know it's it's uber powerful okay but a lot of it centers around the fact that agatha is trying to get this power away from wanda and wanda has to make a choice between 
saving her fictional reality created, right. created family or uh, freeing all the citizens in that town and letting it go back to normal. Because if she chooses that path, then Vision's going to be gone and so are her boys. Right. So she has to make the ultimate sacrifice, which is what makes the episode really emotional. It's the core of the episode, really, is right. that sacrifice and that choice that she has to ultimately make, right? And the show really, you know, centers around her grief over losing her family and once again realizing that she has lost everything in her life as it is expected in a in a series finale right you get a gargantuan battle sequence right and not just between wanda and agatha but double vision i've been waiting to see that double (laughs) uh visions white vision the vision double vision right big special effects some amazing aerial you know battle Mm -hmm. sequences of course they look a little cgi I yeah, invested it, cartoony. Right. It times. reminded me of the Matrix 3. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Matrix Revolutions. And it was, it wasn't kind of that like, CGI, but it was very much in the air and a lot of stuff going on. It, yeah. it was cool. It, it was cool, but yeah, very, very CGI heavy for sure. The show as a whole really, really is a great show. I kind of feel that where the show really is memorable is in its ability to really differentiate itself from episode to episode mm-hmm. and bring about something really unique, not only as it pertains to its special decade but also to like whatever conflicts or surprises arise in each episode i I couldn't agree with you more on that bet though i mean this was a show like i had mentioned in the beginning that i really wasn't sure what to expect and i was like wow look look where they're taking this you know and and in typical MCU fashion, they give you something you don't expect, and it's super cool. It's engaging, and I can't wait for maybe a second season or just to see how maybe Wanda's character, the Scarlet Witch, weaves into other MCU properties. Absolutely, and speaking of that, um, I was kind of hoping and waiting for a little bit more of a reveal or a surprise or perhaps a connection to the MCU movies from this series finale. It never came for me. I don't know if other people will feel differently about that maybe so um but uh you know there are a couple of end credit scenes to the series finale so don't just you know stick around not just for one end credit scene but two end credit right scenes. right one in the middle one at the very end so i'm telling yep. you stick around to the very end elizabeth olsen really does a great job of course of mm-hmm. keeping this a show afloat i mean she really carries this show she does a great from job episode to episode and you know it's fun to see how her character kind of changes from 50s housewife all the way to wanda as mm-hmm. we know her you know um wanda maximoff right, right. I, I thought this really was an opportunity for her to explore her range and i think she did a great job showing it um she, of course she's not meryl streep but i thought she did a good job like you said because each decade has its nuances in right. the acting and she really delivered that another actor who i thought did a fantastic job paul bettany yep you know i've never seen him outside of the mcu and he really brought a lot of heart to this character <laughs> whether he was angry or you sad. cannot make that decision for me Wanda. <laughs> i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow wow like i want to watch more movies with this guy in it yeah he humanizes an android perfectly my goodness yep he does a great job and of course let's not forget about Catherine hahn oh yeah as agnes, agnes right yeah. uh who of course at the end of the day you know she she really does show great range right playing both a a kind of like uh nosy you know next door neighbor and of course evolving into the you know agatha right. character the witch the, the character power that we know witch, the, the you know, villain yeah. of the show right i was so hoping for like a mephisto reveal or something like that right because that's really into the comics too you know or or something else going on but i was glad that we got a new character that we had never right. seen before. yeah and for those who may be unfamiliar agatha harkness is a minor character in the mcu right. uh, mostly well, not even really portrayed as a villain but the mcu does what it does right it goes into these marvel storylines picks out an idea or picks out a storyline and just does its own version of it. Yeah. And I was happy to see in the eighth episode, for example, a nice flashback to the Salem witch trials, right? Sure. Yeah. That kind of gives you a nice backstory or a nice glimpse of Agatha's, you know, past, you know? Right. Right. And I thought Catherine Hahn did for me, she did it more for me as the nosy neighbor. I found her very entertaining, very funny, very uh, of the times in each decade as the witch. 
I bought her, but I, I, want, I guess I expected her to be darker as a witch. You know, she kind of added some levity a little bit here and there. So that's true. That's true. I but can not, see not that. that that's bad. I just, I guess, was envisioning something different. But uh, ultimately, and, she's more yes, likable as very that good job. next door neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. But props to Matt Shackman, right, uh, for directing, you know, WandaVision. He also directed a few episodes of Game of Thrones. So yeah. of course, he has a good, you know, you know, resume under his mm -hmm. belt. So ultimately, what do we think of WandaVision, the series finale, and of course the show as a whole? Well, obviously, we're very positive about it. I mean, maybe we may be a little biased because we're Marvel fans. We do enjoy comic books here and there. We love the movies. Um, but this wasn't altogether perfect. I mean, some parts were predictable, and I thought the series finale was very predictable, but I still had a good time. So for that very predictable i thought it was very predictable i knew mm. that those two battles were going to happen i knew what was going to happen in her internal conflict i thought it was pretty obvious but it was still entertaining i'm going to give the series finale a rating of a 4.5 and i was hovering between 4 and 4.5 one because i just expected more of a twist being honest but it bumped it up to that 4.5 because it hit me emotionally and if it hits me emotionally and it's a marvel movie then yeah 4.5 i honestly feel like this series is some of the best marvel i've seen to be quite honest not only in its cleverness and its originality of course yeah there were some things that were predictable throughout uh plot wise and narrative wise i suppose but i mean Every episode had this unique little touch, you know, and, and that should not go unnoticed, you know, like I, I really feel like this is a great show and, and I don't want to sound like one of those fans because honestly, like I'm not a, a, a Marvel comic book expert by any means, you know, but I, I really thought that there would be more of a connection to the Marvel cinematic universe at large. It didn't happen for me, so that's why I give it the ratings that I give it. Right, yeah. And I think some people, like, like us, probably expected something crazy to happen at the end. And uh, there were a lot of conspiracy theories, right? Some theories as to what was going to happen. And I'm not going to tell you whether or not they did. I'm just going to let you know that my personal expectations were a little bit different, right? So, right. But, but anyways, as a whole thoroughly enjoyed this show. I love that it was a psychological deep dive into Wanda Maximoff and you got to really see what makes her tick. I think you enjoy this more than other Marvel movies because it wasn't just a bunch of action thrown in your face most of the time. You know, this, this obviously with the show, you can kind of get that slow burn and that, right? that build up into her character and how it keeps like her internal conflicts a mystery throughout mm -hmm. a lot of the show and it keeps it keeps things hidden and it and yes. it really is a mystery that's a good for, point. for a that long so time true. so like you i will give my rating for the entire show a four and a half real rating so okay um so the same guys. rating for the for the, right. for, for, the, the for the show for the last episode and the last episode right. as well highly recommend you guys go watch this whether or not you're a marvel fan uh, obviously it's going to do more for you if you have more contextual background so if you're curious about this go watch yourself oh I don't know, 21 Marvel movies. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> we sure would like to hear your comments down below. Please let us know what you think of WandaVision, <laughs> you know, and let us know which one was your favorite episode, right? Please subscribe. You know, that definitely helps our channel. And of course, like it, share it with everyone you know, hit that notifications bell so that you know every time we upload a video. And you can also find us on social media, on TikTok and Facebook. We are at Real Screeners and on Instagram, Real.Screeners. And so, that wraps up our review, our real take on WandaVision, guys. Check us out for our next real take on movies or TV shows.